You look at, I have a man who's a friend of mine, Jamil Shaw. He's with me. He came today. In fact, Jamil, where are you, Jamil? Is he around here someplace? One of the finest people. Where is Jamil? Will you come up here for a second? Jamil Shaw, do you know who it is? He was on the, one of the big shows on Fox and CNN the other day. I, I never met Jamil. And he was talking about Trump. And I said, oh, no, not more. How much, how much can you take? And he was talking to me. And then I turned on the sound nice, and he said, there's nobody that's helped us. We've been forgotten. The parents of children that have been killed by illegal immigrants. His son was killed by an illegal immigrant. And I said, what he is doing now is so important in honor of his son. Just say hello and just give just a, a brief description, Jamil, because it's so, so important. He was with me last night along with other parents of other children that were likewise killed. Uh, please. I'm real quick, I don't want to dominate uh, Mr. Trump. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to, you know, like Mr. Trump was saying, you know, my son was murdered by someone illegally in the country. Uh, they were brought here when they were four years old, and then they were allowed to grow up like a wild animal, pretty much. My son was walking home from the mall one day, like everybody kids do, go to the mall, you know, on Sunday afternoon. We had went to a football clinic in Pasadena on the way home. He asked me to go. I, I said, yeah, I let him go. Um, but I was going to be home by 7, you know, around 7 o'clock I called him. He said, oh, I said, where are you? He said, oh, I'll be home soon, Dad. You know, caught the wrong bus, be there in about a, another hour. I said, I'll give you a call. I called him again an hour later, where you at? That's what I always say, where you at? You know, he said, I'm right around the corner, old man, you know. I'll be there in a couple of minutes. And then I heard two gunshots, you know. It was, I mean, it was so crispy. If I'd been in the gun range, if you've been in the gun range, you know that crispiness tells you how close, you know, it is. And I already knew I had to feel it in my chest. And I went outside to see, and it was laying in the street dead, you know. And I uh, found out that the guy who did it was released from the county jail, just like in San Francisco, on his third gun charge. Now, you have somebody legally in the country with three gun charges already. He's in jail now for a battery on a peace officer, resisting a, a, a assault with a deadly weapon. And they gave him eight months in the county jail, then let him out four months early. The same day he got out, he had the, the Mexican Mafia orders the Latino gang members to go out the same day and commit crimes so he won't be rehabilitated. So it's like an order, you have to go out the same day and commit crimes in the black neighborhood. So that, that was, you know, my son walking home from the mall, they were coming into my neighborhood to, to visit a neighbor, saw my son, and ran right over there and killed him. Just because he was there, you know, and you know, he had a guy in the back seat with him that was there just as a reporter to prove that he got out the car, shot him in the head with a big gun. You know, he had a 45, you can imagine a 45 into a 17-year-old kid's head, you know, it's, don't have a chance. He was shot in the stomach, according to the corner, while he was laying on his back, he had his hands up, and they thought he was shot three times because his hand was just really damaged. He had a bullet wound in his stomach and in his head. And they found out, according to the corner, that he was on his back like this, and they shot him through his hands into his head. You know, and that's the original hands up, don't 